Good evening class. In this video, I'll be talking about some one-liners for the purpose of your English Literature Net exam and we'll be talking about Canterbury Tales. Uh, you can comment down in the comment section below if you want a series of one-liners on every topic or you're interested in practicing MCQ questions so that you could have option of four and you could choose the one. And students, what I believe is uh, you can go through summaries and you can go through the major writers and works and you can go through every part. But it won't help you to uh, do the questions, to commit to your questions because uh, you want to be exposed to some new part. You want to be exposed to the new questions because when... I'll be talking about one-liners or when I'll be talking about a series of MCQ questions, you will be exposed to number of questions. See, when we are going through summaries, we just go through a summary and we miss out some points. Like we have seen in the uh, trend of this 2020 exam by UGC Net, in which various questions were asked, which can be missed out by a student. Like question was, was asked from a drama part that what was uh, uh, what was that person carrying in his suitcase. So from the uh, waiting for Godot drama, a, way, uh, a very different question, a very minute question was asked. So I believe when you will be practicing number of questions, you will be able to retain more, you will be able to cover the uh, uh, the part which has not been covered by you in the summaries in the major writers and works because you can't jot down everything and you can't note down everything and the summaries and details of every part but what i believe is going through number of questions exposing to number of questions will help you a lot so i'll be taking series of one-liners and mcqs and you can comment down if you are perfect with one-liners or you want a series of MCQ questions because students it will help you a lot and I hope I can help you to crack this exam with this series of one-liners on every topic or you want a series of MCQs you can just tell me I'll be taking that and if you like this video do comment subscribe and share this video with your friends who can't afford very Oh, costly classes of English net exam and now I'll be taking you through the video. So starting the one-liners of Canterbury Tales. Now the first one-liner is the pilgrims are going to Canterbury to worship. So they were going to worship the relics of St. Thomas Becket. Second, Palamon marries Emily in the night's tale. So who marries Emily in the Knight's Tale? That was Palamon. The Canterbury Tales took place in the late 14th century. Remember this. Whatever I am marking, just remember that. Then the next part is fourth. Fourth point is Chaucer wrought for all levels of society. Chaucer didn't work for a single level or single class of society, but rather he talked about every class and he covered entire levels of society. Fifth, 24 Canterbury Trails are there. Sixth, the Pardoner's Tale qualifies as a part of Medieval Sermon. So whose tale qualifies as a part of Medieval Sermon? That's the Pardoner's Tale. Then next we have seventh, the pilgrims which were dressed in rich attire were wife of Bath, square, Monk, Physician, and Franklin. Eighth, the prioress was the pilgrim who carries a brooch inscribed with Latin words meaning love conquers all. So she was wearing a brooch which was inscribed with love conquers all. Then square tail is about talking falcon. So whose tail was about talking falcon? That's squares. Tenth, the pilgrims were traveling in spring season. It's important that pilgrims started their journey in the spring season. I hope these points are clear to you. 
now going through the next point. Eleventh is monk was different from other monk because so monk was different here from other monk because he was acting like a lord and he enjoys horses and hunting. So why he was different because he was enjoying the horse rides and he was enjoying hunting. The parson and the plowman are only two characters. Who truly uphold Christian ideals? So the two characters who truly hold Christian ideals were Parson and the Plowman. Next, Thesis in prison, Theban soldiers, Archite and Palamon. Why? Because they survived Thesis battle against them. Next, the part of the scripture that wife of Bath uses to justify her many marriages was the part that she says to be fruitful and multiply. So the part of the scripture that wife of Bath uses to justify that why she had married so many times was that she says that it to be fruitful and it multiplies. The book of wicked wife, the book of wicked wives which Jankin who was the husband of wife of Bath used to narrate so many times or used to talk about so many times with wife of Beth and used to irritate her was about the most treacherous women in the history. So it talked about the most treacherous women in the history. So what did wife of the book of wicked wives talked about that Jankin used to recite in front of his wife that was the book talked about treacherous women in history. You can just pause the video and you can go through these points. The sixth one, sixteenth one, sorry. The pardoner falsely claims his relics have healing powers. Why? Because he believes if he would claim this, then partners will pay him money to be cured. The moral of the nun's priest tale is that. So the what was the moral of the nun priest tale? That we shouldn't fall or we shouldn't trust a flatterer. Next, Thesis in the Night's Tale is Duke of Athens. So who was Thesis in the Night's Tale? He was Duke of Athens. Next, stories that knight like to hear are from rags to riches. So stories which knight used to be very happy to hear about were or the stories which talked about rags to riches. Okay, so the next point is, there are so many portraits of corrupt church officials in the tale because the church was very rampant in the Middle Ages. So why did a picture of the corrupt church is shown to you in the tales? Because church was corrupt in the Middle Ages. Then, Febliox means, what does it mean? It means comical and grotesque stories where characters thrive by their wit. Then the first tale which is described in the general prologue of Canterbury is the Knight's Tale. Moving further, next we have the Pardoner is the most controversial of all the pilgrims for four reasons. His work, his sin, his unrepentant pride and his sexuality. Then, the ecclesiastical characters in the tale are Prioress, Son, Nun, sorry, Priest, Friar, Monk, Village Parson, the Summoner and the Pardoner. Then the actual name of Prioress described is Madame Eglantine. Parson asked allegorically, if gold rust, what would iron do? So this is a famous quote by Parson. And what does it mean? It means that if the leader himself is corrupted, then what would common man do? Then partners sang an offeratory. That's the portion of the mass sung while faithful present their offerings. So, partners sang an offeratory. Then the prologue is set in April. Then in Europe, we talk about four dialects which were used or which are prominent at that time. That is Southern, 
northern midland and kentish but chaucer used east midland di- east midland dialect in his po- poetry and east midland dialect is used by chaucer moving further the prologue had dual purpose first so the what was the first purpose it was to reveal the characters for story and second it is a satire on contemporary society of chaucer next the knight has fought in so these are the places where knight has fought in christendom heathen lands alexandria prussia luthania russia granada lies italia and turkey then next the winner of the storytelling game will be chosen by harry belly harry belly was the name of host and he proposed the game that will be telling tale while we are going to canterbury and while we are coming back and the best person or the best tale will get a free meal and this was it for today's class i hope you like the session and if you liked it please do let me know in the comment section and do share it with your friends so that they could also get benefit from it and do comment